This custom floor plan reflects the state of my home and looks so clean. In my last video, I talked about all the options you have for creating your own custom floor plan for your smart home. But in this video, we're diving into how to create one that looks just like this using Sweet Home 3D and Home Assistant. Now this does get quite involved and is much more advanced than the other options, so be warned. All right, so for the floor plan images themselves, I'll be using an app called Th Sweet Home 3D. You can get a free version on their website, which I'll link down in the description, or you can get an advanced version for about 15 bucks. Once you have the app open, you'll see everything you need to start drawing your floor plan. You'll draw walls, you'll add furniture, you will go as far as you want to. So we just bought our home a couple years ago and I had the advantage of still having our floor plan handy. So I was able to use that to kind of draw my walls and have the exact dimensions. If you don't have your floor plan available to you, rough dimensions will do. This does not need to be exact by any means. So after you draw your walls and you get your outline done, you're gonna wanna add some furniture. Now look, you can go as crazy as you want with this, but just remember, the more furniture you have and the more exact it looks to your current home, the better it's gonna look when you start adding lights. Speaking of adding lights, this is the most important part of building a good floor plan in Sweet Home 3D for your home assistant. Now, I added incandescent light bulbs as my ceiling lights because they have a nice warm hue just like my recessed lights do in my home. And you can tell, if I click this light over my dining room for example, it's gonna show this, dining room, this light right here. Personally, I went ahead and added lights that I don't even have set up as smart lights and saved those images, which I'll talk about in a minute, just in case I ever do make those smart somehow, I wanna go ahead and have that image ready so I don't have to go through this whole process again. All right, so once you have all of your lights in there, your furniture in there, your floor plan is looking the way you want it to look, go ahead and find a good point of view. Now, it's extremely important that you angle this and arrange this so that you can see all of the lights that you're gonna control. Once you have a good viewpoint, very important step, you're gonna to wanna to right click, store point of view. You can just leave it titled that as long as you remember what it is. Now, this is gonna save that point of view and you will recall this view regularly as you begin to work through saving the images of your lights out so that you can put them in Home Assistant. All right, so before we do anything, let's go ahead and go to point of view, go to our most recent one, and let's create our base image. So I'm gonna right click, create photo, and I'm gonna start at the top. I'm gonna make sure this is 1920 by 1080. Next, I'm gonna go to quality and make sure it's set to best. Then I'm gonna go adjust my date. I want it to be today's date and I want to change the time. I want to adjust the time based on how I want it to look outside for where the sun would be. I'll show you what I mean. If I set this to 12 a.m., it's gonna be dark outside, which means there's not gonna be a lot of light coming through the windows. Personally, I like to set it to get a nice soft light in there. So I'll set that to 8 a.m. Next, you wanna to go to lens and you wanna make sure default is set and then you just wanna hit create. Now in a past couple builds, I used 12 a.m. for more of a night look and I'll put those on the screen right now just so you can kind of see what that would look like. But this is gonna be what an 8 a.m. is gonna look like, which is my current dashboard. It gets a lot of soft light, not harsh light, no weird shadows or lights, which could look really cool depending on how you have it angled, but I prefer more of a soft light for this purpose. All right, so this is gonna take some time to render your images in 3D, and it'll take even longer once you have lights turned on. And you're gonna be doing this for every single individual light in your home. So grab a cup of coffee and get comfortable and get going. All right, so there we go. You can see we have our base image. There's no lights on in the home. This is just our base image. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you like the way this looks. Make sure if everything's not lined up perfectly, you can close it out and rearrange and adjust. And make sure you get it the way you want it because this is what it's gonna look like once you're done. It's just gonna have different lights on throughout the house. So make sure you like this the way that it is. And once you have it set, go ahead and click save. And you're gonna to wanna to save this somewhere. I actually have all of mine already saved in V3. And I saved mine in two different folders, downstairs and upstairs. That's up to you. Basically, this is just the path that you're gonna use when you get into Home Assistant later on. But I already have all mine saved, but I wanna show you what I named this one was Downstairs Base. Now, just name it whatever you want so you know that this is your base layer. And then as you go through, you're gonna to wanna to name your lights in ways that you know you'll remember them. You will use the names of these images in your home assistant later on. So just name them so in a way that you know you'll remember them. All right, so now it's time to start lighting this place up. I'm gonna find my dining room light. 
which is right there. Just happened to be the first incandescent light that I chose right there. And you can see a little bit up here, I have it right there. There's a couple ways you can do this. So if you look right here, there's some bars. You can click and drag and that'll turn the power up. You can double click on it and that'll open it or you can double click on it here. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 50%. I'm gonna set all of my overhead ceiling lights to 50%. So I know I'm getting a nice bright light, but it's not overpowering and reflecting off walls too harshly. So set that to 50%. Click OK. And now you're gonna to wanna to go to point of view, make sure you have that exactly where it should be. And you're gonna right click, create photo, make sure all your settings are the same. So I need to go to today's date. I'm gonna choose 8 a.m. default, all good. And let's create. All right, and there you can see we have our dining room light on. So here's that important step. We're gonna save it wherever you want and you're gonna name it something that you will remember. So I just called this dining room light and we have that light. So now here's the next step's really important. You're gonna want to go back into that light that you just created and you're gonna wanna turn that all the way back down to zero so you don't continue to get it, so it doesn't look like that light is on when you create your next lights. Okay, and the last thing I wanna show you as an example is how I created a garage door opening. Because if you can see, if I go in here and I find my garage door, if I turn that visibility off, there's just a solid wall there. So what I did is I actually found a door frame. I added that door frame from here just by searching door frame. There it is. And I just added that there, the width of my driveway out here, and it created an opening in that wall. And that allowed me to create whether my garage is open It'll be an opening, or if it's closed, you'll see the garage door right there. So, pretty simple. All right, so we're here in Home Assistant, and you can see my floor plan is active and working. You can actually see a little bit of the ghosting here because of the garage door image, but that's okay. The thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make these files accessible by uploading them into Home Assistant. Now this is gonna look a little different depending on how you have Home Assistant deployed, but I'm running Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi, so this is the easiest way I found to do it for myself. I went into File Editor here in Home Assistant, and I went to my folders, and I uploaded everything into this www folder. You can see I've done this a few times here, but I did it into V3 and I have downstairs and upstairs. But you'll wanna create a folder and upload all of your images into that folder. So next we're gonna to wanna to create a new dashboard. So we're gonna create new dashboard from scratch and you're gonna to wanna to call that floor plan. I actually have one called floor plan test here. So I'm gonna go into that and you just wanna create a completely blank dashboard. And I've actually created, I actually created my own dashboard and got the code for you and I'll put that down in the description and basically it just takes everything you're gonna need to build this out properly. Once you create your dashboard, click edit. We're gonna go to the three dots up top, raw configuration editor, and we're just gonna replace all this with the code that's down in the description. And you can see it's called floor plan. I'm gonna change mine to test. We got, it's a panel and that just means it spans the width of the browser that you're in. And path is if you have multiple floors, I have basically just my first floor you would wanna create a new path for every floor that you create. I have a horizontal stack made up for this. And then the actual card itself is a picture element card. So now let's go through and let's build our floor plan. So let's save this as the raw configuration and it's gonna show a blank image here, that's fine. We want to go down to edit and edit just this card. Now that we're in the card editor, we're basically gonna fill in all of the blanks with, our, with your own image path right so for me that would be backslash local backslash v3 slash downstairs and this is case sensitive for however you have it named slash let's we're gonna go with downstairs whatever your base image title is png and there it is you can see we have our base image loaded in if I were to save this right now, it would just show up as a base image. All good, obviously nothing's clickable, no lights are even brought in here yet, so let's do that. So we go back to edit, and now for our elements, this is where we're gonna start bringing in those images of the lights that we created. So image, oh the type is an image, entity. What entity is actually going to control when this image shows up? That's gonna be our light 
dining room light, whoops. And I have my dining room light there. Now I'm gonna wanna take this and you can either copy this entity name or you can type it each time. But anywhere down here, you skip all this, you're gonna go straight to where it says entity inside these brackets. And I can't get it to paste right, so I'm just gonna type light slash dining room. dining room PNG. And then that's for your on state. You can see right here, it says on, state image on. That's where you want that image. Off, you just want your base image, V3. And there you go. So my dining room lights are currently off. So it's basically showing that it's not on and we're all set there. So let's go here, let's go. All right, so we have that. I have no way of controlling that on here yet. But you see, if I turn them on from my phone, it reflects the state of the image. So let's add a control point there. That's what this next part of the code is for. So let's go ahead and create that control point. In order to be able to click on that and control it or tap on it and control it, we have to create a state icon. So we're gonna say entity, light dining room, and you see this is my dining room light right here. It showed up as soon as I added it here. It set left 5% and up 55%. So I need to get that over here. So let's just play around with some percentages. 55, we'll bring it there. Let's go back and make it 45. We'll go 43. I know that's gonna be good. Let's go down to the top. You can see what I'm doing here. So from the left, it's how much percent and from the top, it's how much percent. So we're almost there. Let's see what 30 looks like. Okay, we'll go to 29 to put it right in the middle of the table. And there you go. Now I can click on that and it'll turn on or off. If I want that clean look I was saying, I'm gonna go down here to opacity and I'm gonna set that to simply zero. And it's basically just made that icon invisible. So if I click it, it's still there, but it's just invisible and that'll toggle it on and off. So again, you're gonna to wanna to do that with all your lights and I'll show you how I organize it is I'll just copy. So I'm just grabbing all the way down to the state icon. I'm just grabbing the image portion, enter down, go back and okay, perfect. So I basically just copied the dining room one. Let's change some of that stuff though. You know what I did though? I didn't save that. So let me do that real quick. All right. That's all fixed. So now I've created a second image here. I basically copied this down here and let's do my garage lights. So we're gonna do lights, garage. Now I have two lights in there, but I have a group made called garage lights. Currently showing state is off. Copy that, replace our entity, V3. Now, now let me show you what I would do here is I would just basically go back up to where I have that already copied or you could just use the very top one, whatever is your, wherever you have your base image. And I'll just replace that. And there it is, you can see, so now I need to create a state icon so I can toggle it. So I'm gonna copy that, paste that, and we're gonna make that visible. And it's basically gonna show up over my dining room table because that's what I copied. Let's go 70, that's great. 73, that'll appear right where I want it. Let's go 60. Three. Perfect, right there in the middle. And now I'm gonna make that 0% opacity. I know it's right in the middle when I click it. Look at that, garage lights are on and it's reflecting right there in the state. How cool is that? So one key thing I wanna point out is down here in these state icons, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your tap action is set to toggle. Unless you put something and you actually just wanna tap it to get more information, which you can type more dash info. And you can find all of that shorthand on Google. It's super easy to find. And now if I tap that, it'll just open the more info page. But I prefer toggle so that I can just toggle it on or off. Again, you're gonna to wanna to repeat this with all of your devices. Try to keep your images together and your state icons together. And if you do them in any certain order, do 
the image and then the icon and it'll be pretty easy to decipher later whenever you come back to inevitably edit it and add more devices. And now that we've done that, I'm just gonna save this. Now this is my test one, but what I could do from here is I could actually, as you can see, I have a desktop dashboard and these are all conditional icons and then I have two different cards right here. So what I could do is I could go here, I can edit and grab the edit for this card, copy this card, and then all I'd have to do is whatever, I also have my phone, which looks a lot better on my phone, but I have it right here. So I could edit that card and I could just replace this, that card with this code and it would, it would put it wherever. So all you would do here is you would add a new card and you would go manual, paste it, and you have your card right there. And it's just, that, just like that, you can put that anywhere you want. And because this is a completely custom card, you can do so much more with it. I know for a fact I don't have this all figured out, but it has been so fun and rewarding to build this and it's a visual representation of the current state of my smart home and it's been super fun to figure out. So I hope this video was helpful for you. I know I had a blast exploring this and will continue to refine and tweak it. If it was helpful, go ahead and like this video. It helps the algorithm. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel. I have lots of smart home content and more tech content as well. And lastly, if you do create any custom floor plans using this video, I'd love to see them. Uh, you can find me on Threads, X, or on Instagram, at Dylan Steyerwall on all platforms. I'd love to see your custom dashboards. Before you go, here are a couple videos that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.